In this video, you are going to learn about item auto binding across workspaces in Muxed Fabric. Understanding this mechanism is key in larger multi workspace environment setups with multiple deployment pipelines. So stay tuned for more. Welcome to the video. My name is Alexia and I'm a data architect and a Microsoft Data Platform MVP. And on this channel, I cover Muxed Fabric related topics. In this video, we are going to take a look at item auto binding across workspaces that you need to understand when doing deployments in larger environments where you have multiple fabric workspaces per environment and separate deployment pipelines for those. But now, without further ado, let's check out how this feature works and what are the limitations and good to know things about it. Let's first use this diagram here to explain the setup that we have here today. So we have this two workspace per environment setup, which means that when we have three environments, we have six workspaces in total. First, we have this extract workspaces here underneath here. And this extract workspace is basically simulating a situation that we have this centralized extract workspace where data is landed first, and then it is consumed in other workspace. In this case, we have this finance workspace here where that that data from the extract is consumed. And then we have some dependencies between these workspaces. In the finance workspace, we have this PL finance pipeline, and this pipeline is actually invoking one pipeline and one notebook in this extract workspace. And then we are also shortcutting data from this extract workspace to the finance workspace. So basically we have, three, have these three dependencies across workspaces here. And now we would like to deploy this whole solution to the test environment that is currently empty. So let's proceed with that. So here in Fabric, we have the exactly the same setup that we just saw in that diagram. So here is the extract dev workspace. And in this workspace, we have that lake house where we have some data. And that is that finance data. And this finance data is shortcutted then to the finance workspace. Then we have this pipeline with the wait activity and a notebook with this hello world, because we're just trying to demo these dependencies between workspaces. So the contents in these items doesn't really matter that much. And then we have the finance workspace. And here we have the finance dev workspace. And in this finance dev workspace, we have that lake house. And to that lake house, I have created a shortcut to that table in that extract workspace. And then we have this pipeline that is actually running those pipelines and notebooks in that extract workspace. So we are running a that pipeline from that extract workspace. And then we're also running that notebook from that same workspace. And then I have deployment pipelines for both of these workspace. And now we would like to deploy this solution forward. So let's start with the extract. And we're deploying all the items that we currently have in the extract to the test workspace. So let's deploy all of these and let's proceed with the deployment. And now it is deploying those items. And this should finish fairly quickly since we don't have that much to deploy here. And now the deployment is done and we have successfully deployed all the items from the extract dev workspace to extract test workspace. And we can quickly check out that now we should have some items in this extract test workspace. And here those items are. So they have been deployed successfully. Next, let's deploy the contents of the finance workspace to test. And here we have only those two items. We have the lake house and then we have that pipeline. So let's deploy these and let's see what happens. So let's click deploy and now the deployment starts and we can then check out what happens with those dependencies across workspaces. And now we can see that the deployment actually failed and we were not able to deploy the lake house to the test workspace. And let's see what the detail says. Import failure, invalid shortcut payload, batch errors. Shortcut operation failed with due to following errors. Target pad doesn't exist. So let's break down a bit more closely why this failed and what is the situation that we have in these environments now. And let's close this. And by the way, we were already able to deploy that pipeline to this finance workspace. And before we break this down, let's go check out that pipeline in that finance test workspace. So let's go to the finance test workspace and let's open up the pipeline and let's see where those connections are pointing. So let's check out the invoke pipeline first. And we can see that this is now pointing to test, which is correct and how I want these things to be. And then we can check out the notebook. And this is also pointing to extract test, even though in the development environment, these were pointing to extract dev. And in just a moment, I will explain to you what happened here and why these are now pointing to test and not dev anymore. 
So this is the setup that we currently have now after the deployment. With Extract Workspace we were able to deploy all the items successfully to the next workspace. But with Finance we were only able to deploy that pipeline. But with this Finance pipeline the connections are already automatically pointing to the Extract Text Workspace and they are not pointing to the Extract Dev Workspace like they did in the previous environment. So what is happening here? In Fabric we have this concept called auto-binding across workspaces. And how this auto-binding across workspaces basically works? Basically it uses the information from deployment pipelines. So in order to make this auto-binding happen, we need to have a deployment pipeline for all of those workspaces that we are using part of the solution. And the key thing there is that we need to have the same amount of stages in those deployment pipelines. So in this case, we have three stages in both of these deployment pipelines and there we have those corresponding workspaces. So basically Fabric knows that these workspaces are a pair and these workspaces are a pair and these workspaces are a pair. So when we do these deployments in this logical chain Fabric knows that it needs to change those connections to point to that pair workspace. So this means that these connections are changed automatically and you don't need to do anything. But since this item pairing is using these stages to come up with this logic how to pair these items. It doesn't work if we have different amount of stages in these deployment pipelines. For example, if we would have four stages in this finance deployment pipeline, the auto binding wouldn't work because the fabric couldn't know how to point those connections correctly. So you need to have the same amount of stages in your deployment pipelines to make this happen. But now let's come back to this lake house and why we were not able to deploy this lake house to this test workspace here. The reason is that we didn't have this finance table in this extract lake house here. So because we are doing that auto binding for these two items and we tried to deploy this to this next workspace and we were not able to establish that shortcut, the deployment failed to that dependency. So now in order to fix that we would need to create that finance table to this lake house and then we would be able to deploy this finance lake house to this finance workspace and it would automatically point that shortcut correctly to this extract lake house. So let's do that next. So in the extract test let's open up the lake house and then I will upload some data here that we're going to use to populate that table. Here we have the finance test file and let's upload that. And then let's load this data to a table and let's just call that table finance and let's click load and this should create a new delta table under this table section here. And here is the data and I have also added this extra column that tells the environment of the data. That will come handy a little bit later on when we do the production deployment. But now we can go back to the deployment pipeline and we can actually now deploy that lake house and now it should work. So let's do that and let's deploy that lake house to that finance test workspace. And now the deployment is done and let's go back to the finance test workspace and let's go to the test workspace and here we have the lake house once it loads up and there's the lake house and here we should see the shortcut table and in this table we should see that test column here because this should be reading data from test and in the development environment I have the value dev in that same column and we can see that now it is reading that data from the correct place. And now in this diagram we can see the current situation that we have. So now we have managed to deploy all things to the test environment successfully and all the connections and dependencies are handled by Fabric automatically. So we didn't have to point these manually to point to the right workspace. Next we are going to deploy this solution to production and this time we are actually going to start with the finance workspace. And you might think that this deployment would fail instantly because we have these dependencies to these items that we haven't yet deployed to this production workspace. But that is actually not the whole story what happens there so let's check it out. Before we continue with the video I would like to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric content. This doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. Also you can join my YouTube channel as a member and get some exclusive perks like members only videos and access to additional study materials and resources like the original draw.io file that I'm using in this video. And another way of showing support is to buy me a cup of coffee by clicking the buy me a coffee link in the description. But now let's continue with the video. 
And now let's deploy the contents of this finance workspace to production before deploying the contents of the extract workspace to production. So let's try to deploy the contents of the finance workspace and let's click deploy and deploy and we get immediately this error message that we cannot do the deployment. The error message doesn't tell much, but basically we cannot do the deployment because we have that auto binding going on between these two workspaces and we don't have those dependencies in the extract workspace deployed yet. So basically it is giving this error about the pipeline, but what if we just try to deploy the lake house? So let's do that and let's click deploy. Let's see what happens now. And now the deployment is done and the strange thing is that we didn't get any errors and we managed to deploy that lake house to that finance production workspace. So let's go to the finance production and there we can see the lake house. Let's open up that lake house and let's see what is happening with the shortcut there. So basically we have this finance table here. And here we have the data in that shortcut table and we can see that this is still pointing to that test environment even though we are now in prod. And we can also click this manage shortcut and we can see these IDs and there we can see the workspace to which this is pointing and this should be corresponding with this ID here which is the test extract workspace ID. So basically this is now pointing to test even though we are now in production. And now in this diagram we can see the situation that is going on. We were not able to deploy the pipeline to production but we were able to deploy the lake house but the shortcut in that lake house is still pointing to test even though now we are in production. I don't basically know if this is a bug or a feature but this is the behavior that is happening currently. So this lake house deployment won't fail but the shortcut points to that previous environment which is not correct in many cases. Next, let's try to deploy the contents of this extract test workspace to production and let's see what happens with the shortcut. So let's deploy all of these items to production now in this extract deployment pipeline. Let's click deploy and they should be deployed shortly. And now the deployment is done and let's go to extract and let's also create that table there. So let's go to extract prod. Let's open up the lake house and then we are going to upload a file there. And we are now going to upload the production version of that file and let's upload that and it should be there. And then we are going to add this to a table. Let's call that again finance and then we can click load. And now we should have that additional column tell us that this is now production data. And there we can see that now the environment is production. So let's go check out the finance workspace and let's see if the shortcut automatically started to point to this table. So let's go to finance and here we have the finance prod lake house and let's refresh this and let's refresh that table and let's see where does this point to now when we have done that deployment. We can see that this is still pointing to test and if we open up the deployment pipeline for finance we can see that now it's marking that there is a difference between these two lake houses. So we should redo the deployment for this even though these two lake houses are actually pointing to exactly the same place which is test. So this is the current situation that we have now going on. So basically we have managed to deploy the extract contents to that extract prod workspace and then we have only deployed that lake house previously to the finance prod before we deployed these items. But the shortcut in that finance lake house is still pointing to that extract test. But now we would be able to redo the deployment and deploy also this pipeline and then redeploy this lake house and after that the shortcut would start to point to this correct place here. So let's do that next. So let's deploy the pipeline and the lake house to finance prod workspace. So let's click deploy and while we wait for the deployment I would like to remind you that I have this website called certiace.com that offers free practice questions to Microsoft certification exams like DP600, DP700 and DP900. Basically we have here custom made practice questions that you can use when preparing to Microsoft certification exams. So after watching this video go check out certiace.com. And now the deployment is done and let's go to that finance workspace. First let's check out this table and this is now pointing to prod. So this is now pointing to the correct place so that deployment now automatically pointed this shortcut to that extract prod workspace. And then we can check out that pipeline in this 
production workspace and do these point to the right place and these are also pointing to production. So this item auto binding has again made it sure that these connections are pointing to the correct place based on those deployment pipeline stages. And now this is the situation that we currently have in Fabric. So all of these cross workspace connections and dependencies are pointing to the right place based on these deployment pipeline stages. And this is made possible by that item auto binding feature that depends on these different stages that we have in the deployment pipelines. But remember that if we wouldn't tie these workspaces to deployment pipelines and for example we would have a different amount of stages, this auto binding wouldn't work this way. So you need to have this same amount of stages and also attach these workspaces to these deployment pipelines in order to make this work. And here we have some Microsoft documentation about this auto binding and how it works across workspaces. Also, here is a point how you can avoid using auto binding. For example, in cases where you have some reports and you would like to point them only to production, for example, so that if you have your reports in another workspace and those are tied to deployment pipelines and then you have another deployment pipeline for your other objects like your lake houses, etc. In that case, if you would point the report you have in your development environment already to production, it would stay pointing to production even though you would deploy it forward. So in that case it wouldn't do that auto binding because we are not pointing this development report to the development workspace in this case. And this was all that I wanted to cover here today. I hope this video clarified to you a bit how this item binding works across workspaces and what is needed to make this happen. And what are the limitations and dependencies that you have to consider when doing those deployments. But now I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.